building brush piles. So, co you know, when I always talk about bird feeding and attracting birds to your yard, is always food, water, and shelter. We talk about those things. And shelter is, of course, where the category of brush piles comes in. Uh, the, if, if birds have to cross over a wide open yard, they are not confident in that. They, you know, they know they're vulnerable to predators whenever, uh, especially avian predators like Cooper's hawks and Sharpshin hawks. And so they know uh, that that's a dangerous place. So we always talk about giving them cover. And some, you know, some people naturally their yards have lots of trees and lots of shrubs uh, that they can place their bird feeders and bird baths near, and they, so they have an advantage. But not everybody does. This is my backyard. Now. When we moved in 10, 12 years ago, what, 12, 13, how old has it been? It has been a while now, um, but the people had cleared out all of the brush underneath the trees. So I, while I had some big trees in my yard, I had no underbrush. And so I had no cardinals, and very, very few cardinals because somebody had cleared out all of the underbrush that they like, catbirds. I've never seen a catbird in my yard because the, the understory was just com cleared completely out. They liked that thorny, brambly, you know, they, they, they like that stuff. So um, what I've had to do is uh, build a brush pile until my, my plantings came into play. And this, I, I don't have my brush pile anymore because I, I had it long enough to uh, so that my vegetation could grow in. And this is just really close to my feeders and this is a golden current that's gotten really thick. And just the other day, I was watching this sharp shin hawk came in flushed the birds, landed right here on the deck railing, was sitting up here and walked up and down the deck railing. And this bush down here on the ground was filled with birds. There were juncos and cardinals and goldfinches and everybody was down there low in that thick bush. And I, the, the sharp shin was crawling back and forth. So it's doing its job. Now, the first brush pile that I built uh, looked a lot like this. And Ruth is nodding her head because this is her backyard. And this is a brush pile right here. And I don't know if you can see, but there's probably 20 or more <laughs> morning doves here on the ground by this brush pile eating, uh, I'm assuming is ground throw or millet. You know, so she's got seed down there on the ground. But up against that cover, and it makes those, those doves more confident to feed there. Plus, you know, I know the rest of her, fruit, her bird feeders are around her yard, but those brush piles are wonderful for flying into. Now, this time of year, people go, well, I don't have a lot of stuff to build a, a brush pile with a lot of limbs and, uh, well, we're going to get into building them. But right now, most of, well, I used to be able to say all of you, but now with, with artificial Christmas trees, it's not a suit. But uh, for those of you who have a live Christmas tree in your house right now, that is a fantastic brush pile. What, what I used to do when we lived over in Liberty, the house there was very open, the yard was very open, is every Christmas I'd, I'd drag the Christmas tree out when we were finished with it, and I'd drive a stake down in the ground, and I would tie my Christmas tree, old Christmas tree, to the stake so the wind wouldn't blow it and roll it across the yard. But a Christmas tree makes great cover, escape cover. Evergreens are perfect for it. So, you know, if you've got a red cedar that you don't want where it is, or you can get a red cedar, you know, cut down and put over there, that, that is an excellent addition or a standalone uh, brush pile for your feeders. They, they need that escape cover. But if you want to build a, a, a brush pile, then we have to go to Carrie's yard because Carrie went over and beyond when it came to uh, her yard. If you can see all around, her yard is very open. And it looks like that all the way around. So the, the feeders, the birds were having to cross so open in wide open space and she wanted to, to attract more birds. So she built uh, this, uh, started this brush pile and she used big limbs and I was going to show you to, to, to build a framework and if you can see this this is baling wire she has here that she's tied these limbs together so they don't uh, fall over and so she's got her framework there and then she added lots and lots of limbs let's see I'll give you a couple different angles this is it in the winter. So she's added lots of limbs up against there. And one thing I love about her brush pile is how open it is underneath. Now, birds don't need, you know, to be super, super thick. They just need to be able to keep, especially those avian predators with wings, to be able to fly in there and get them. So she uses this, uh, put seed on the ground. She's got a couple of feeders underneath there. 
She can hang feeders from the brush pile if she wants to. She's got her peanuts on one side and open tray of safflower there. But she can add limbs. When limbs falls in her yard, instead of taking it out to the street, she takes it over and ties it into her brush pile. So she's always building it. And you know, the, the limbs are gonna break and they're gonna break to balance. She'll have to take old ones out and put new ones in. But that is a great way to build a brush pile. And you know, I, I know I've had people say, well, my neighbors won't like it. You know what? My birds are more important to me and then being able to protect them. So um, another angle from her, you can see this is from viewing from her kitchen and her deck and her, her bird bath and then the brush piles right out there. If not, it would be just wide open and the birds would not be nearly as attracted to that yard. Certain species are better at the wide open spaces, but a lot of birds want that cover. Like, you know, I mentioned cat birds and, and cardinals, they like that cover. You know, if you're a target for predators, you know, they, 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 that escape cover is very, very uh, important. Do you need it all year round is a, is a, um, a question I get asked. Yes, birds need cover all year round. Um, in the in the summer months, a lot of things with the, the leaves add quite a bit to the bushiness and things of cover that you do have. So maybe they're not quite as important during the summer months. But you know, if you want to survive, if you want a place to get out of, and your yard is open year round, yes, your your brush pile is a really really good idea. That's all there is to it. So they're not complicated. They you know they're pretty simple. Um, I, but to be really effective. They need to be more than just a pile of sticks. You do need to put some thought and some framework into it so the birds can get in and under that. And even, you know, uh, feeding on the ground underneath, that's where you usually see your toeys and uh, the juncos and white throated sparrows. They like their feeding down there on the ground underneath those brush piles a lot. So, you know, just handfuls of uh, millet seed or ground throw underneath there will be much more attractive to them. So, brush piles, they're really important for birds and they're not that hard. To build. I know, like I said, uh, live Christmas trees, if you're through with them, a perfect uh, a put, uh, piece to put into a brush pile to make it that much more effective. And they'll hold their needles for weeks and weeks after they, you, they've they been cut. So uh, you can, you, then in the spring, later in the spring, then you can toss it if you want to. But right now is a great idea to use your live Christmas tree as cover. So it's a great idea for a program. Thanks for reminding me that I promised to redo this one and I hadn't had a chance to. So if you like the programs, please give them a like, give them a share. If you're on YouTube, please subscribe. Send an idea for future programs. Until then, come on, let's talk birds.